Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject failure analysis and prevention. And we are talking about the fundamental sources of failure. And under that, uh, we are also talking about the uh, improper manufacturing conditions. So, um, although various aspects related with the improper proper manufacturing conditions we have talked in the previous presentations. Uh, in this one we will be uh, taking up the improper uh, cleaning procedures if they have been applied, improper uh, reworking methods if they have been applied, uh, then uh, improper uh, uh, material selection if it has been made then also the component uh, can fail and then improper assembly of the components. So, these are the four aspects about which we will try to talk. Let us see that how much uh, we can talk in this uh, presentation uh, related with the improper uh, manufacturing. So, here uh, we know that uh, uh, most of the metals interact with the environmental gases. Uh, like uh, oxygen, nitrogen and hydrogen and this kind of interaction becomes uh, very aggressive at very high rate um, uh, especially in the high temperature conditions. So, uh, like iron when it interacts with the oxygen it forms the various types of the iron oxide like, like Fe3O4, Fe2 O3 etc. So, such kind of the oxides they lead to the decolorization or sometimes it appears in form of the rust also. So, uh, similarly, the aluminum, uh, titanium, magnesium all these also forms their oxides which will be present at the surface. In addition to that some of the impurities in form of like uh, paint, grease dust, dirt etc. If it is present uh, during the manufacturing under the uh, uh, during the manufacturing by various processes the cleaning is uh, required. For example, before welding we need to clean the edges of the uh, plates to be welded or the uh, edges of the plates uh, uh, which have been machined out needs to be prepared uh, by cleaning. So, that uh, during the welding all these impurities if they are present at the surface they can be removed to produce the sound inclusion free weld joints. So, the cleaning is required. One typical example here is mostly for this kind of cleaning there are various methods or, uh, of the cleaning like in the mechanical methods where a wire brush a metallic wire brush is uh, commonly used apart from that. Uh, in chemical cleaning like scratching also we can consider that, but there is like chemical cleaning uh, some of the oxides uh, which are very adherent, very uh, non porous then uh, chemical cleaning is applied and mostly uh, the hydrogen based acids are used for this purpose. So, like say SCL is commonly used for removing the rust or the oxide scale from the surface of the steel. So, these hydrogen based acids when are applied on the surface of the uh, metal to remove these impurities uh, frequently uh, this uh, uh, hydrogen uh, gets introduced on the surface of the component. Like say uh, the component cleaned by use of the hydrogen based acids and if uh, it uh, the hydrogen gets introduced uh, into the surface uh, of uh, or in the subsurface region of the base metal. So, this introduction of the hydrogen into the base metal um, has to be taken care of and if it is not done then like the edges of the plates prepared uh, introduced with the hydrogen during the cleaning and subsequently either welding or the development of the coating will be leading to the uh, hydrogen related problems which may be in form of like say fine pores or uh, like hydrogen induced cracks in case of the hardenable steels or uh, like fine pores in case of the aluminum alloys. And uh, this kind of phenomena is especially uh, problematic if uh, immediately after the cleaning either welding is performed 
or uh, some kind of coating is uh, applied and therefore such kind of uh, the hydrogen if it has been introduced on account of the chemical cleaning must be removed and for this purpose normally heating of the components uh, components cleaned using the acids has to be applied so that uh, through the uh, diffusion all the hydrogen introduced can be uh, uh, diffused out into the atmosphere so that uh, mm, the components can be made free from the hydrogen and the related adverse effects. Another aspect, uh, so this is what uh, we can see here during the acid pickling or uh, followed by the coating or the welding hydrogen introduced and this hydrogen can be problematic especially in case of the high strength steels in form of hydrogen induced cracking and uh, the chemical cleaning followed by the coating becomes more uh, problematic because it does not allow the escaping of the hydrogen from the metal which has been cleaned by the acids. This is one typical diagram show, uh, photo which is showing that how the chemicals are used for the cleaning purpose. Uh, reworking and the repairing is the another uh, important aspects. We know that uh, whether it is casting having the surface uh, defects uh, which are open in form of like say the blow holes cracks or other defects which can be corrected using uh, the, uh, the by deposition of the metal. So, such kind of the castings like say if there is a problem then this portion is gauged out and then metal is deposited afresh uh, so that uh, uh, such kind of defect can be taken care of. So, uh, this is called uh, like uh, in, in all these cases there will be partial processing of the metal which may involve like partial melting uh, to correct uh, the defects to rectify the defects if they have been uh, introduced in course of the manufacturing processes. Uh, this is one example where immediately after the casting we have recognized that there are defects and discontinuities and which needs to be corrected so that unnecessary uh, so that the, the, the component after the reworking can be uh, can be used for the purpose for which they have been uh, prepared. So, this is one aspect of the repairing and the reworking another is uh, like uh, during the service also uh, we come across the variety of issues like uh, the component if subjected to the wear over a course of uh, over a period of time we will see that we are uh, leading to the loss of metal from the surface which is leading to the loss of dimensions and the loss of dimensions leads to the malfunctioning of the component or can lead to the uh, reduction in even their load carrying capacity. So, reduction in load carrying capacity due to the loss of dimensions and uh, this needs to be taken care of and for this purpose normally the metal like say the component is this and it uh, part of it has been worn out say this is the region which is subjected to the severe conditions and the loss of metal has led to the reduction in dimensions like this and so we need to rebuild the dimensions which is called reclamation reclamation and the reclamation is nothing it is just a deposition of the metal from outside uh, by the welding or any other uh, coating process so that uh, the dimensions can be rebuilt and they can after the machining the same as the the original one can be prepared so this also involves the reworking but in all these reworking approaches uh, the partial melting and partial processing of the metal is involved and if it has not been done properly then uh, it leads to the, the the various issues which may be in form of like say uh, the the development of the heat affected zone uh, or it can lead to the development of the residual tensile stresses or uh, it can lead to the excessive hardening of the already existing HAZ. So, all these things uh, will be increasing the sensitivity of the metal 
towards the tensile stresses, towards the shear stresses and towards the notches if they are present. So, basically these will be reducing the tolerance of the metal system or the component which has been reworked for uh, the cracks and discontinuities. So, it is always uh, preferred that if the reworking is to be done then uh, the issues related with the formation of the heat affected zone due to the partial melting development of the residual stresses and uh, uh, the development of the heat affected zone again over the already existing heat affected zone uh, can be taken, uh, uh, taken care of properly so that uh, unnecessary uh, increased sensitivity of the metal uh, towards the discontinuities can be reduced. So, as I have said reworking and repairing involves partial processing of the metal using processing like welding and metal deposition which may involve again the welding or the thermal spray processes. Uh, residual stresses due to the welding under the restraint conditions can uh, really adversely affect the, uh, the fatigue strength, tensile strength, increased cracking tendency. So, a combination of the tensile residual stresses and uh, reduced uh, ductility, increased hardness uh, actually lower the tensile strength, fatigue strength and increased uh, and uh, uh, they, these increase the cracking tendency. So, um, this, these are the different ways by which the failure can occur during the reworking. So, reworking has to be planned out, procedures for reworking has to be developed properly so that these aspects can be taken care of. And it is not that difficult uh, uh, to establish that if they have contributed towards the failure. For example, uh, like if we have one, uh, these are the two plates which were welded. And during the service, if the crack was found here, like say in the heat affected zone, so obviously it will the due to the uh, earlier welding, there will be one heat affected zone. To take care of this crack, again the metal is deposited since this is already hard, and this is brittle, having the tensile residual stresses. And if again the welding is applied for reworking purpose or repair purpose in this area, then this will be creating another heat affected zone 1 and uh, this will be introducing the tensile residual stresses. So, this zone in any case is going to be a source of the weakness, source of the problem if uh, all these adverse effects related with the reworking and repair are not taken care of. So, reworking has a procedure for reworking has to be established properly and then accordingly it should be established else it can be the another source of the weakness and source for the failure. Another important aspect is about the, the material selection. Uh, we know that uh, most of the designs are made uh, uh, are based on the yield strength of the metal. Um, like if the deformation is to be avoided then we take some factor of safety with regard to the yield strength to determine the allowable stresses. And similarly if the fracture is the criteria then uh, maybe ultimate strength and uh, some factor of safety to determine the tensile stresses. But these are the two uh, uh, properties uh, which are good for the static load conditions. And these are indicative of the general mechanical behavior, general mechanical behavior under the normal ambient conditions. These show the mechanical uh, uh, resistance of the metal uh, means resistance of the metal towards the external loading in very general way. So, uh, these are obtained through the tensile test. So, the tensile test, tensile properties are extensively used for the design purpose, but these may not be applicable for entire range of the applications because in some of the cases this be, these becomes, uh, these become very irrelevant. So, the first thing is inadequacy of the tensile data, tensile inadequacy of the tensile data. So, means the tensile data really does not represent 
to the suitability of the material for the entire range of the applications which may be in form of like uh, uh, the, uh, the fluctuating loads in the corrosive environment or the uh, load carrying capacity at a high temperature, load carrying capacity under the load uh, room temperature con uh, means uh, the low temperature or sub zero temperature conditions. So, different approaches, different parameters need to be considered apart from the tensile load uh, tensile data for a selection of the suitable material. Tensile data solely is not sufficient to for the design purpose if uh, uh, for the array, uh, for entire range of the applications which uh, we come across. So, uh, this test is good for the routine, uh, routine test of the quality of the material. We know that the steel is made uh, or the metals are made in different batches like they, there are different heats and each heat will be producing a particular amount of the metal. So, what is the general quality of the metal that is checked using the routine tensile test it is good for that. So, routine general quality test is uh, uh, can be effectively performed using the tensile test, but if it is to be designed for the specific, if the component is to be designed for the specific applications, then it is required to consider the specific set of the properties. Uh, so, this is one aspect, the tensile data, we should not rely much on the tensile data for the design purpose, but the criteria has to be selected appropriately and for that purpose, one thing is to be considered the estimated or expected expected failure mechanism as per the obviously we need to consider the service conditions which may be in form of like say the temperature load corrosion uh, uh, load type of load, rate of loading, temperature, high, low, etcetera. So, all these conditions will be giving us idea about the potential mechanisms which can lead to the failure of the material and this expected failure mechanism should be the basis for the selection of the suitable criteria, suitable criteria for selection of uh, the metal. So, about the various uh, para parameters and properties that we need to consider, we have already uh, talked earlier. Uh, it is just to reiterate that we need not to re over uh, rely on the tensile data and as per the service conditions suitable uh, means the expected failure mechanism need to be identified and so that um, the component designed can survive uh, and can deliver the intended service. Uh, for the design life of the component. Uh, so, here um, and if that does not happen like if we do not select the material in light of the expected failure mechanism, uh, then it can lead to the premature failure of the component. Uh, the selection of the material really becomes complicated and more difficult in certain situations. Uh, we know that uh, if we take any metal, so metal initially as and when it is produced, it will have one set of the mechanical properties as well as it will have one set of the microstructure. But during the service, so many things happen like uh, it will be subjected to the surface layer deformation, it will be subjected to the microstructural variation microstructural variation it may be uh, so deformation will be leading to the work hardening uh, microstructural variation precipitation of uh, undesirable phases or exposure to the uh, radiations which are harmful for the uh, structure and the properties of the components. So, those things which uh, uh, will be altering the properties, the, the properties microstructure and the deformation condition is the plastic uh, means the metals, the metal condition in terms of the deformation. So, all these things will be adversely affecting the their load carrying capability. So, especially the properties which uh, 
properties for which resistance of the metal changes as a function of time uh, for those applications selection become difficult. Uh, for example, here um, the wear whenever wear uh, happens like uh, it may be like abrasive or adhesive or erosive or cavitation the surface is exposed it's a near surface layers are exposed to the external conditions so in case of say adhesive we are near surface layers up to say 100 to 200 micrometer depth these are conditioned in terms of the chemical composition in terms of the deformation and so the properties are found to be different at the surface and in the core region and normally this trend becomes a like this where surface and near surface layers are harder as compared to the subsurface zone. So, here if the is surface and this is the core then the hardness will be decreasing as we increase uh, the distance from the surface and uh, go down into the core of the material. So, this distance is uh, so in all these cases as the uh, materials uh, material is subjected to the uh, wear uh, the, the surface layers uh, get deformed chemically modified and forms various kind of the mechanical mixtures which will be altering the surface properties. So, this is one case where uh, uh, the properties change as a function of time. Another example is high temperature exposure, high temperature exposure. So, here we know that uh, as a function of time uh, uh, like there is a, um, a metal system like steel having the different carbides designed for a high temperature stability may be martensite, ferrite, perlite etcetera all these are there in initially in the desired form. But when it the component is exposed at a high temperature for longer period uh, all these tend to get destabilized carbides tend to get destabilized and they will get coarse and fine carbides will be uh, dissolved or they will be eliminated which so these things basically uh, lead to the reduction in the mechanical properties their mechanical load carrying capacity is reduced and therefore high temperature exposure frequently uh, leads to the creep this is one thing and also sometimes the cracking it is called type 4 cracking is also observed if the unfavorable metallurgical transformation uh, after a long time at a high temperature uh, takes place especially in the chromium molybdenum steels uh, then the type 4 cracking is also observed. So, these are the changes which are which will be experienced if the steel is exposed at a high temperature. So, there is a particular temperature limit up to which a particular steel can be used thereafter it will it is a hardness will decrease uh, there will be loss of the alloying elements in form of decarburizing there will be instability of the structure etcetera so many things happen and uh, so apart from the wear and the high temperature exposure there is a third thing that is about corrosion. Resistance to the corrosion is also adversely affected especially stress corrosion cracking and the, the corrosion coupled with the fatigue. So, the resistance of the metal to these environments is uh, gradually decreases as a function of time and which will be adversely affecting the performance of the component during the service. So, for such kind of the applications there will be continuous change in the uh, properties of the material and therefore, uh, and therefore the uh, selection of the material for such kind of the applications become more difficult, more complicated and we need to see more seriously and carefully when the selecting, uh, when selecting material for such kind of applications, uh, special applications like wear, uh, high temperature conditions and the corrosion. Uh, then uh, we have uh, uh, one typical example where improper material selection leads to the failure of the component. So, for example, here uh, we can see this is one nozzle which was being used to uh, direct the jet of the hot water for curing of the rubber tire. So, uh, this jet actually failed, failed prematurely and uh, this failure uh, was just through the reduction in temperature uh, during the curing which was uh, desired. So, a failure of the carbon steel spray ring uh, is the case. So, this uh, ring failed prematurely uh, within 3 to 5 months 
as compared to the other rings which used to survive for more than uh, four years and uh, uh, the failure was just from the reduction in curing temperature because these nozzles were used to direct the hot water onto the rubber tire. So, during the curing it was observed that these rings uh, were not able to increase the curing temperature and temperature was dropped to 177 to 182 degree centigrade and, uh, uh, and while it was expected that the curing uh, will be uh, done at uh, 193 degree centigrade. So, such kind of the drop was the first indicator that there is something wrong as far as the nozzle uh, ring is concerned. So, um, and what uh, uh, the cross section of the nozzle was like this where the A, A line is showing the, the direction uh, of the section uh, where from and the cut section was obtained. So, this is the AA section uh, along this line showing the cross section of the nozzle. So, the nozzle here the cross section uh, you can say uh, 0.25 inch in the diameter hole was drilled. Uh, so, this was 0.25 and this was also 0.25 and it had a particular angle like say 27 degree centigrade and this opening was a little bit larger it was a 9 by 16. Uh, uh, then uh, after some time what was observed the some uh, worn out uh, uh, openings of the nozzle uh, their cross section was uh, studied and the failed ring cross section uh, for failed ring uh, opening uh, showed that the outlet was increased from 9 by 16 inch to uh, 1.25 inch to the 2 inch. So, there was significant increase in the diameter of the opening uh, in case of the failed ring and similarly another uh, and the one which was showing the satisfactory result this also had uh, the diameter of the opening of 3 by 4 inch without uh, much uh, increase in the diameter. So, the, the ring opening which uh, failed one was showing the larger diameter. So, increase in diameter led to the in uh, reduction in velocity of the jet and which in turn reduced the um, reduction in drop of the uh, reduction in the curing temperature. So, this uh, case was uh, investigated and it was found that uh, uh, the nozzles or uh, nozzle uh, openings in the nozzle had uh, pits with the irregular shaped uh, and without corrosion. So, there was no sign of the corrosion, but few pits were observed in the opening of the nozzle. So, the chemical analysis of the ring was performed. So, the chemical analysis showed the 0.11 percent carbon as compared to the required carbon content of 0.2 uh, percent in the steel ring uh, the metal and uh, while uh, other elements were uh, the same as the required one. Metallography showed that the fine perlite ferrite with the stringers of the perlite and the hardness of the T5 HRB in case of the, uh, the ring which performed successfully. So, these were the stringers of the perlite and the structure as a whole is fine uh, as compared to the one which had failed and the one which performed well had a fine structure in just, uh, stringers of the perlite and the hardness of the HRB 55. While the, the ring which failed showed uh, the coarse ferrite and uh, perlite with the hardness as of the 40 HRB. So, the hardness was lower and the structure was coarse. So, this was the finding of the chemical composition and microstructure of the steel ring. And uh, so, the conclusion was that the failure of the desired curing temperature was due to the enlargement of the opening of the spray ring, which in turn increased the agitation and reduced the velocity that led to the lower heat transfer and uh, which in turn reduced the uh, curing temperature. And erosion was caused uh, in form of pitting due to the cavitation and cavitation occurred due to the lower carbon content, lower hardness and uh, uh, the coarse grain size of the uh, ring which was subjected to uh, the erosion. And so, all these factors in turn reduce the erosion resistance like low carbon, low hardness and coarse grain size. Therefore, corrective action which was taken. 
uh, uh, was that uh, the proper composition of the steel with the subcritical annealing so that the final fine grain size um, can be realized which is not more than 7 STM and minimum 55 the HRB should be maintained and once this uh, a uh, recommendation was applied thereafter no further failure of the spreading were observed. Now here I will uh, uh, summarize this presentation. In this presentation I have talked about the two aspects one was about uh, uh, the improper material selection and uh, we should not rely uh, too much on the tensile properties uh, of the uh, of the uh, of the material uh, for the design purpose and another aspect about which I have talked was uh, that we should develop the proper procedure for reworking and repair purpose else it can lead to the premature failure of the component. Thank you for your attention.